Let me tell you a little story about a couple who asked me to pick their wedding music. And they said, go pick a song that you, you think will resonate with us. And I thought immediately of the Beatles song, I Will. And when I searched it on YouTube, I found this glorious voice, this amazing singer who did a cover of this song like I've never heard and I fell in love. And her name is Sarah Nimitz. And the song I Will played during their wedding and everybody was teary eyed because of the way that Sarah sings this song. Sarah Nimitz joins me now. And you have done, you've done this to millions of other fans all over the world. They've fallen in love with your voice and your music. Sarah, it's so good to see you. Oh, Carlos, it's so good to see you. Thank you for that introduction. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I that's feel... a true story. That's a true story. That's how I found you. That's the best way to connect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and but you have such a way with, with the interpretation of song that is very, very meaningful and, and touches the heart, and, and, and I feel it from you, like I don't feel it from a lot of singers. Why hey. do you think that is? Why do you think that is? I don't know, I mean, I think certain people connect with certain people, but for me, when I perform a song, it's really about telling a story for me and, and just relating the message of the song. So I'm not thinking about, oh, I hope I hit this note right and I hope <laughs> I hope my makeup looks good. I'm, I'm just trying to tell a story. So maybe that's it. I don't know. Well, I also think it, that you're joyful in your approach to things. And I, I find I found that when we met the last time when we were in the studio, the first time you appeared on Carlos and Lisa. And and the truth is that that, that joyfulness, that, that good spirit comes out in your music, even when you're singing moody stuff, too. Thanks. Well, I, I <laughs> joyful spirits kind of see each other. And I feel the same way with <laughs> the first emails you sent. And then when we got together at your studio, I was like, okay, this is, this is a good human. I like this. <laughs> Tell me about the, I know we talked about this before, but I think it's, it, it's worth repeating how you and Snuffy Walden became a team. Yeah. So I started acting here in California when I was about nine years old and Snuffy was the composer on one of the shows I did and uh, I hadn't met him but I just went into his studio, recorded part of the singing role in the studio and I met him and you know I, I had great respect for his music, got his email address but then we didn't talk for about six, seven years, wow. and I was watching Friday Night Lights, and I saw his name on the credits, and I just thought, oh, I love this music. I, I loved meeting him. So he had the same AOL email from back in the day, and I wrote him, and he wrote back, and we just got together and jammed and then started working together, and, and he wow. became my mentor. So we've been working together for 10 years, but we've known each other for about 20. How old were you when you met him? I was, let's see, I was nine. Wow. So, yeah, almost 20 years. Wow, that is incredible. Well, that's, yeah. it's a great pairing. It's incredible, the combination. Now, you've written some songs. In fact, uh, one of the songs on your new album that's coming out is Made to Last, right? Right, yeah, Made to Last was a tune Snuffy and I wrote. And uh, it was on my album, Get Right. But now it's also going to be a whole new live version on the new album, 2020. All right, just for those of you who have not heard, here's a little clip of Made to Last with Sarah and Snuffy. If it's made to last, I better catch you to see. Oh, if it's made to last, then it's good enough for me. And I love that song, and, and you've got so many other great songs. Tell me what the mission was of this new album that's coming out on uh, October 16th. We had been playing live for the last decade. And, you know, songs just take on a whole other life when you play them live, you know? Mm. So we had listened to what we recorded on the albums, and, and we liked them, but we realized we hadn't captured that live energy before in an album. So in February, we thought, okay, let's record this live album. Then we set up our tour in Europe, our tour in the States. So we were going to travel around playing this music. But of course, COVID happened. So 
we pushed the release. Now it comes out in October. And mm -hmm. instead of a tour, we're doing a live stream show. So, you know, just roll in with the punches of. Yeah, you have to adapt, right? So the concert yeah. is on October 15th at noon and at 7 p.m. And we'll put a link to the tickets that you can buy to, to listen to this show. But you did tour. I mean, I, I saw you were touring Europe and having a great time and reading some really strange novels. Now, I don't understand that part of it, but that that's the other part of your personality that's so interesting. Oh, thanks. I always have a book with me. They're my, my best friends. And I'm really into 19th century Russian literature. So I always have a lot of Dostoevsky and Tolstoy, Gogol with me. So yeah, I always have an exciting book. Do you speak Russian? Me. No, What's I don't. What's the deal I, with that? That is so weird. You no, know, <laughs> Karamazov when I was about 20. And the book just connected with me and I, wow. I went, oh, I want to read everything by Dostoevsky and then I started moving out into the other writers from that time. Well, you're but a true now, artist. Yeah, I mean, you're a true artist. That's the kind of thing that an artist would do, something kind of off the, off the beaten path that way. That's fantastic. Whatever, whatever find the creativity, I guess, right? All right, so we're going to hear this live concert, the live feel for your music. What kind of music? What, are these original songs you're going to be playing? They are, yeah, they're original tunes. I wrote, Snuffy and I wrote, and we've got a couple covers. We've got three covers on the album. Mm -hmm. and, and you also play with another group. Tell me about that. I do. I play with my buddies over at Postmodern Jukebox, and they take music, current music, and they put it in a time machine. So you might hear Justin Bieber as if it were, you know, a swing song from the 40s. So yeah. that's been a lot of fun, and I've I've been really blessed to get to tour over forty countries with them. That's fantastic. I love the instead of hey yeah, it's like hey yeah, yeah. I think so I, it's like you right. You, you do that like yeah. It's that cool kind yeah. of you. Yeah. Hey. hey yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think you're gonna be coming for my gig. I don't, I, you know, I don't, my hair doesn't look so good long, you know, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, I mean, I love the fact that you, you have this diversity of music and that you're able to pick up the guitar and play the guitar, the bass, sing, uh, jam with the, the postmodern jukebox, play with Snuffy Walden. You are the complete package. Thank you. Well, it's all just different pieces of the puzzle, different ways to express yourself. Well, Sarah, it was so great to catch up with you again. Uh, the album comes out on the 16th of October. The concert is on the 15th. Get your tickets now, noon and 7 p.m. Sarah Nimitz, so great to catch up with you. Continued success to you. Stay safe, stay well, and hopefully we'll see you in person soon. Yes, thank you, Carlos.